Have you ever felt that you were on the outside of your life, looking in? Well, if you had been with me that day in July 1977, you would have seen me in the utility room in our house in Colleyville. It's a very small town in Texas. I am six years old, pretty skinny with a bad haircut, and I'm with my mom as she is giving me a bath in that utility sink. I just had my tonsils out, and she's asking me a question, except something isn't right. I can't answer her. Inside my head, I'm saying everything that I want to say. In fact, I'm like screaming to try to get the words out, but I can't. You see, when the doctors were doing the operation to remove my tonsils, they had clipped the bottom of my tongue, and it made it very awkward to speak. So awkward, in fact, that I developed a stutter. I literally and figuratively lost my voice. This point in time became a turning point when my life went from a normal, happy childhood to someplace a lot less joyful and a lot more of a struggle. And so you'll find me a lot of days on the school playground being teased and bullied about my stutter. I desperately wanted to be included, yet over and over, I was on the outside. Do you know the feeling when you just want to fit in and be like everyone else? I was told I was stupid, and I mean, I couldn't fight back because they were right. I must be stupid. Everyone can speak. Because it took me a long time to say words, I spent a lot of time alone. I started to build up these inner walls inside myself to protect me from the shame I felt about not being able to speak. However, when I got to college, I found that I could start to speak again. I would still trip over words, as I sometimes do even now, but I was teaching myself how to talk again. However, I still had no voice. I had built such strong inner walls to protect myself from hurt that I allowed no one in. And if they heard my real voice, the real me, there was a chance that they wouldn't like what they saw. I mean, why would they? I didn't like me. So I decided better just to carry on and let the world see what they wanted to see. Happy and carefree Diana. So I kept going. I graduated college, got married, and started a career. I developed this drive to make it. And that's where you'll find me today, 15 years later, in 2008. I've made it. I have a great career as a realtor, I have two beautiful children, Ethan and Nolan. I have a good husband. And this, this is my million dollar home in Portland with its big kitchen and fantastic front porch where I can watch the sunset. And that's where I am now, sitting on that front porch with my dear friend, Nina, having some tea. Now, Nina is a lovely woman with the kindest brown eyes. And I re remember her asking me, Diana, what's wrong? You don't seem yourself today. I don't know, Nina, I guess I'm just a bit tired, I think. And she answered me, well, Di, you have been traveling a lot recently, and then you planned that big dinner party last night, and today the house looks like no one has even been in it. It's immaculate. I don't know how you can be so organized. You must be exhausted. I was exhausted. Trying to be perfect, it's exhausting. The look in her eye was so kind and so concerned that I got the courage to speak for once. Nina, I don't know what to do. I'm trying to keep everything together and it's all falling apart. My kids are being bullied at school and I know how that feels, but I don't know what to do about it. The relationship with my husband is breaking down, and I think we've passed the point of no return. The doctor says there's something wrong with my thyroid, and that's why I'm exhausted all the time, even when I get loads of sleep. And you know what? I'm really done being a realtor. In fact, I'm kind of feeling sick to my stomach just knowing I have to go into the office tomorrow and do another week of this. 
I feel like everything is so out of control. Has there ever been a time in your life when you wanted it to just all go away? I knew the answer wasn't out there. I knew the answer wasn't here. That wall that I had built up my entire lifetime was starting to break apart piece by piece. And as much as I wanted to hold it all together, I just couldn't anymore. So I turned to the only thing that had ever really helped me. I learned about meditation in college, and I did that every day. But now, oh now, I really meditated. <laughs> Hours at a time. Some days I only did that and take care of my kids. I went to an Ayurvedic healer, and I studied. Oh yeah, I studied. I studied everything I could about personal development and spirituality. I took many courses and retreats with a lot of different teachers. I needed a lot of help. Eventually, I started to find myself. Eventually, I found my voice. It wasn't quick and it wasn't easy. There was a lot to unravel. It almost felt like I was peeling back the layer of an onion, one layer at a time. Everything made me cry. My kids made me cry, but that's probably pretty normal, right? <laughs> Sunsets made me cry. Puppies made me cry. And then eventually I decided this is like a rose blooming, one petal at a time. You can't rush the process. There's beauty in every unfolding. And in the end, you have this incredible, unique expression of you. And so now you'll find me, April 2015, sitting in a tea shop with Nina catching up. The million dollar house and the husband are gone. And I'm at peace with the path I've had to walk. And Nina says to me, Diana, it is so wonderful to see you so genuinely happy now. I can't believe it's been seven years since that day on your front porch after that party when you seem so lost. I feel this calmness and inner peace in you. I wish I had that. You know, I have some challenges myself, like with work and trying to juggle everything at home. What did you do? What can I do? You know, it took me a lot of years to break all this down. I don't want it to take you that long. I want you to be able to move through your perceived walls so much more quickly than I ever did. Even now, I still do the processes I learned when I have challenges. No matter where you are in your life right now, whether you feel it's on the upward trajectory or you just lost that huge account, or you just received a devastating diagnosis. No matter if you think it's your mistake or someone else's to bear, you can move forward. You can overcome. It's not about having life all go your way. It's about what you do with what life presents to you.